Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Olivia McCuskey, and I'm with the Education Alliance. The Education Alliance is a statewide nonprofit organization that mobilizes business and community support for public schools. Here at the Alliance, we are passionate about helping all West Virginia students become West Virginia Ready graduates who are prepared for success after high school. I would also like to take a moment to acknowledge our EdTalk sponsors for supporting this event, Bowles Rice, Jackson Kelly PLLC, and Toyota Motor Manufacturing West Virginia. Thank you so much for joining us for the virtual Ed Talk on how COVID shaped the future of career readiness. Before COVID in 2019, the Education Alliance started a high school summer internship program. This program helps students develop career awareness and cultivate career skills. In 2021, thanks to generous support from Toyota, Benedem, American Electric Power, and Steely Foundations, and the Jefferson County Chamber, we transitioned that program to provide in-school internships through a high school course that we are going to learn about in today's Ed Talk. But before we learn about this program, we would like to have some audience participation via this poll. We know that when students have a dream and a passion, their school engagement is stronger. So what is the number one factor that shapes a student's career pathway? Is it family, teachers, experience, or social media? All right, thank you so much for your participation in the poll. It looks here that um, everyone, about 50% of us thought that family was the number one factor that shapes a student's career pathway, but actually the correct answer is personal experience. Uh, this can be things such as internships. Experience is actually the number one most influential factor that um, guides a student's career pathway. However, we also know that traditionally, fewer than 10% of high school students are allowed experiences such as internships. And this is really the reason that the Educa Education Alliance began the West Virginia Ready Internship Program. We are excited to share with you in today's Ed Talk how the pandemic shaped the internship program and allowed us to reduce barriers and increase access by making this an in-school course that was piloted in four high schools. Capital, Harvard Hoover, and St. Albans High Schools in Kanawha County, and Independence High School in Raleigh County. This course was facilitated by a teacher, and students earned graduation credit upon completion of the course. There were two main components. First, each Monday, students participated in a virtual job shadow training module with a different business each week. We'd like to thank the 13 businesses across West Virginia that help students learn about potential career opportunities in our state and facilitated training in a West Virginia Ready career skill. The modules were also recorded for teachers to revisit with their students throughout the course. This helps students develop career awareness. Secondly, each school was matched with one business for the entire semester. The business assigned a capstone project and supported students through weekly mentoring calls. This all helped develop students' career readiness skills. To help us learn more about the program, we are so excited to bring you three panels today, sharing business, student, and educator perspectives on our topic. Before we get started, I just want to mention a few small housekeeping items. Everyone is on mute, but if you think of a question for any of our speakers while they are talking, please type it out in the chat feature, which can be found at the bottom of your screen with the speaking bubble labeled chat. We'll try to get to as many questions as we can. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to our president and CEO, Dr. Amelia Quartz, to moderate our first panel. Amelia? Thank you, Olivia. And I would invite our two business panelists to please turn on your video camera and also unmute yourself at this time. And I'd also like to remind our audience that if you have any questions, we'll be taking those to our panelists at the end. So please use the chat. Um, at this time, I am really excited to welcome our two business panelists. We have such a fantastic turnout today for today's uh, Ed Talk, so we're pleased that all of you could join us. And we're going to kick it off with our business panel, and I'm pre pleased to introduce Srini Matam, who is the president of Toyota Motor Manufacturing West Virginia, 
And also joining Srini is Amanda McDaniel, who is the co-owner of Shenandoah Planing Mill in Jefferson County. So first of all, I'd just like to welcome our two panelists and ask you each to tell us a little bit about your business. So Srini, we'll start with you. Yeah, th thank you, uh, uh, Amelia, and also Olivia for coordinating this very important uh, talk. My name is Srini Matam, President, Toyota Motor Manufacturing, West Virginia. We're located here in Buffalo in Putnam County, um, across from Buffalo Bridge, if you're driving towards north of 35. Uh, we, we have two plants. Uh, we make engines in one plant and uh, transmissions in other plants. So all of our engines go into Lexus, Highlander, and uh, RAV4 vehicles. And same thing on the transmission side, uh, we, we provide it to Camrys and Avalon and ES, Lexus ES, and also Highlander and Sienna. We started making new hybrid fourth generation transmissions last year. So we're really, really proud to do that. More, there's more coming from our plant. So please look forward to the news. Thank you, Srini. And we're so excited about your participation and welcome you to our panel. Amanda, could you tell us a little bit about your business, please? Sure. Um, thanks for having me today. Um, we are Shenandoah Planing Mill, um, a father and daughter team. My dad and I opened this business together. And we like to say that we do things that people don't do anymore when it comes to wood. Um, we specialize in interior finishes like trim, handrails, stair treads, and flooring. But we also sell rough dimensional lumber. Um, sawing services and kiln drying services um, as a service to the public and to commercial clients. We also operate as a business incubator and currently house four other growing businesses um, that are tandem to ours in, um, in our industry. We feel that supporting each other is vital to the success of everyone and uh, we're passionate about helping small businesses thrive by um, providing them access to resources, networking and customers here at the mill. Thank you, Amanda. It's been just a real thrill to get to know you and, and learn more about your exciting business there in Jefferson County. So I'd like to kick off the questions with um, a, a just uh, an ask for you to describe your company's participation. Olivia described the two components of the model, which is the job shadow training module that occurred every Monday. And then we also have the capstone and mentoring. So let's start with Amanda. Could you tell us how your business participated in this program? Sure. Um, we participated in the job shadow training module. Um, and we presented an hour long discussion um, for students. And our topic was having a growth mindset in the workplace. Uh, we had a lot of fun talking about the mistakes that we uh, have made or might make in the future and how being able to recover from failure makes you a valuable asset to an employer. Um, I had several of my employees record their stories and talk about what they did to grow from their negative experiences. And overall, we had a lot of fun. Awesome. Thank you. And Amanda, you also um, provided some great visuals and pictures about your company, and we got to see what an entrepreneur like you, uh, what your day-to-day -day is like. Yeah, yeah, we did it. We had a little video tour around our shop um, because a lot of people aren't really exposed to the world of wood, and so, you know, we, we wanted to let people know what that's like. Awesome, thank you. I know the interns really enjoyed that. Brini, uh, could you talk a little bit about uh, Toyota's participation in the mentoring and the capstone aspect of the project? Yeah, so like you said, Amelia, so we chose the second path of a capstone project. Um, we, our intent was to do on-site on activity, but uh, because of COVID and for the safety of the students and everybody, uh, we chose to do this uh, project uh, virtually uh, to help students understand manufacturing, uh, to set that foundation for the students on what happens in a real job and uh, manufacturing process. So uh, the project we chose was related to the mask uh, building. 
uh, process, which we had done it internally. We wanted to teach and uh, uh, mentor students on how to Kaizen, which is continuous improvement of a process. So in this project, uh, our task was to teach the students how to build a mask uh, with all the materials provided. Uh, once you build a mask, you time it to see how long it takes to build a mask. And from there on, you do the problem solving and also uh, from a efficiency gains to reduce some um, wasted processes to improve the cycle time, we call it, which is the start and end time of building a mask. So the more you can make, it's better uh, to help everybody else. So the student did a phenomenal job, honestly, with their creative thinking and problem solving. Uh, at some point, uh, some of the students were building it in 40 seconds, I believe, if I remember correctly, and they went down all the way to 20 plus seconds. So a lot of good effort on this uh, capstone project. That's exactly right. I know I was there at St. Albans where you were matched with St. Albans and Independence High School. We got to see those capstone presentations where the students took the mass building from their original time of 40 seconds and Kaizen, as you said, improved it all the way down to a 15 second mass build. And that was really exciting for them. Thank you. So I'd like to ask a broader question now, maybe if you could just talk a little bit about why your business participated. Srini, um, why, why would Toyota want to participate in this program? Well, well so for, for us, our, uh, our one of the key priorities is to contribute to the community. And uh, what better way to communicate than uh, to the education and to the students and build a foundation so what we did was we, we partnered with Education Alliance a few years ago, about three to four years ago. We started building this program first year in 2019, I believe we had an on-site and month long internship program for four students to come on site and kind of walk through different job roles. And then last year, because again, COVID, we did a virtual uh, program. And this year, same thing again. So the the point about all of these exercises is uh, have students walk through a day in life of a job and especially in manufacturing. So they have a good learning and problem solving no matter which area they pick or they decide to pursue later on in life. So you establish a good foundation. That, that's one of the main reasons we as a company we want to invest in the community, in the schooling and education so we give all those choices to our students for a brighter future. I love that, Srini. So you see this as a real investment in the community. And we, we certainly uh, saw that in our interns. Amanda, how about you? Um, why did uh, Shenandoah Planning Mills want to participate? Well, my answer is not all that different from Srini's, just on a much smaller scale. Um, but we care a lot about our community. Um, we intentionally put our business here in, in West Virginia, um, and we love this area. And um, so we like to do things that can support, um, support the community. Additionally, we're always encouraging people to consider trades as a, as a viable um, option for after high school education and employment. We see that as an investment in our future labor force. Um, we really need smart people that are interested in doing hands-on work in trades. Um, and we wanna spread the good news about that. Working in a trade like ours um, can be really fun. It's a lot more relaxed atmosphere a lot of times. There's a lot of hands-on stuff that's very satisfying. Um, and we just want people to know, we want high schoolers to know, kids to know that this is a viable option for you. There's money, there's job security, uh, there's, there's great options out there in trades. Um, additionally, I personally am always um, excited to talk about women in trades because there's not enough women in trades. And so I like to show people that women can do it too. 
And we also are smart and have good ideas relative to, to um, industry. And I just want to represent that for younger kids that are, that are considering that. So that, that's kind of why we wanted to participate. Absolutely. And I think we saw that in almost every business, their commitment to diversity and equity. And we, we really uh, applaud you for your, your leadership there as a female entrepreneur in West Virginia. So uh, COVID was obviously the elephant in the room, so to speak. Could you talk a little bit about, uh, you know, there you are in Jefferson County, how, um, how did the model work around COVID and were there any impacts of that? For me, um, this was a great model. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure how it would have worked otherwise since this was our first year participating, but um, doing this over Zoom made it very low impact for me. Obviously, I'm very busy. We have a small business. I have young children. I'm involved in community volunteering. Um, and so my time is limited and, and doing this over Zoom really made it a very simple process. And I would have loved to be able to be face to face and you know, hopefully that can happen in the future. But um, Zoom just made it very uncomplicated. I, I was able to stay at work and um, you know, we prepared something over the computer and it worked out just beautifully um, and was not at all in any way disruptive to my schedule, you know, just speaking just from a time standpoint. Great, thank you. And I know um, we did record your training module. So the students that were not on live with you were able to watch it later with their teachers. And so it really had a ripple effect across the state and across the classrooms that participated. Serena, I know you've talked a little bit about COVID and you all were involved in the original in-person internship. Could you talk a little bit about some of the, you know, the challenges for COVID and some of the workarounds? Uh, if you can imagine, most of our workforce, both the team members and also the full-time, uh, they come on site when we have the training dojo, we call it, which is the uh, an area where we have a hands-on training for team members. So when we when we were challenged to continue to pursue to support this uh, capstone project, of course we wanted to go virtual. But how do you teach virtually um, uh, students uh, without any material? You're touching the material, or you're trying to show the right way of doing things. But uh, my team had good meetings internally. And it was challenging sometimes on how to communicate. We have the third way of doing things and we don't want to teach them incorrectly. But with a lot of uh, you know training material and having a virtual hands-on experience, I think that worked out really well for the students. And at the end of the day, you and I were in uh, St. Albans High School uh, last week. And when I saw the presentation from the, from the students, and I was amazed uh, about, uh, on how much they had grasped the situation. And uh, they were almost like Toyota team members speaking uh, for us, really, right? So uh, th that tells us that we have to make every effort, every effort, no matter what the means is, to try to improve and not give up. Absolutely. I think uh, the students, the interns showed tremendous flexibility. Of course, all of our business partners were so flexible working with COVID and really trying to maximize this opportunity. Uh, and our interns took full advantage and uh, just showed great grit and flexibility, as you said, to, um, to make it a success. So one of the questions I know that we've gotten from other businesses is, you know, really about the bottom line. Um, all businesses have to be mindful of the bottom line. So um, Trini, could you talk a little bit about uh, how much work it was for you and your team? Was it difficult? Um, just could you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, so especially this capstone project, it was not too difficult because we had the established process in place. Uh, you can imagine when we shut down last March, uh, and uh, then we came back uh, to work to start building the mask internally for our own uh, team members. 
with that, our, our process was pretty much established and we had a lot of material. And uh, it, was, it was not that difficult to teach it to the students, but it's more of a making it a priority to allocate our team member, Mike Smith, to relieve him of some other areas to make this a priority. That's what it takes uh, at the end of the day. So and we were able to do that. And uh, you know, when I see the output from the students, it's all worth it. It's all worth it at the end of the day. Wonderful, thank you. So, um, Amanda, I have another question for you. Obviously, you said you know this was your first year uh, participating in the program. What was your biggest surprise or takeaway from the program? Um, you know, honestly, my biggest surprise was how engaged the students were. Um, and how easy it was to have them interact over Zoom. I assumed that there would be a lot of me talking and maybe some of them responding, but really we were able to have a very interactive discussion. And that was, that was surprising. I was, I was impressed with their mature responses. I was impressed with their critical thinking. Um, and that, that really made it very enjoyable for me. Um, just as a presenter to be able to have that dialogue going on, uh, that surprised me a lot. That, that was so true. I think we were all uh, really impressed with the way the interns stepped up and rose to the challenge and they were very mature and interacted uh, so well. And we purposefully had those sort of touch points throughout the training module where they could engage with you and um, make it interactive. Srini, how about you? What was your biggest surprise or takeaway from the program? I think the biggest surprise to me was uh, the student's ability to grasp virtually the content of what we're delivering because in, in a typical class setting, the teacher is right in front of you, right? But here, it's virtual at the same time. Uh, it's not a... Uh, a class curriculum like a math or a English or anything, right? It's completely a different manufacturing process. Uh, I mean, the method we used, uh, I mean, it, 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 the output of what we saw the other day in the St. Albans High School from both schools, right? Um, it was phenomenal in terms of grasping how to do a problem solving, how to put their minds together, and then how to work as a team together because in each one of the capstone projects, there are more than two students in the thing and they were working together safely, right? So that, that's the biggest takeaway. You can do anything, literally. Absolutely. I think the, um, the rigorous capstone project that not just Toyota, but all of our businesses assigned were um, very much real world uh, career expectations. And again, the students rose to the challenge. So uh, the last question that I have, and we do have some questions in the chat, I'll um, just also ask our audience if you have questions, to please do chat those. But, you know, um, Srini, if you could give some advice to other businesses that are maybe on the fence thinking about should I participate, um, can I do this, what would your advice from a corporate perspective be? I think simply speaking, I think we all need to take time to invest in our community, because especially if you look at West Virginia, even this morning, uh, I saw the news that you know a lot of uh, uh, people are leaving the state, and which is really unfortunate. And uh, by spending time uh, in the high school system and promoting education, and then giving them the right path, uh, that'll that'll improve the skill set within our own West Virginia community. And then the other businesses come in, can come in and you have a robust economy within our West Virginia. So I think it's our utmost responsibility to step in and build a foundation all the way from the schooling system through the, uh, through the jobs within our industries and make sure that we provide that opportunity for students. So I, I urge all of the businesses, please strongly consider this. Thank you, Srini. Amanda, how about you from a small business perspective? What would you say to other small business leaders across the state that might be contemplating uh, taking part in the program next year? Um, you know, I know that as a small business, a lot of times your schedule is strapped 
um, just because it's, you know, there's, there's fewer people to delegate things to. But um, I would really encourage people to participate because I do feel, you know, as Srini said, you know, it's all of our obligation to lift each other up in our community. And this is part of that. And it's a really uh, low impact way to do that. Um, and also to, to be able to talk about your business and, and drum up interest in hopefully, you know, your future workforce. Um, but really it, it was not a huge time investment for me. And, um, you know, I'd really encourage people people to participate. Great, thank you for that. Uh, we do have a question in the chat for you, Amanda, and then also one for Srini. For Amanda, um, what strategies or advice would you have to, um, to draw younger workers to the skilled trade? Well, that's a tough one because that is one of the biggest challenges that we, that we face you know, in our specific industry. But we, um, we bring people on and we train them here. And I think that um, you know, offering training as part of your uh, program is, is really important, um, giving them skills that they can then you know, hopefully not leave, but hopefully you know, become a bigger asset to your company is important. And also making it a priority to have a good work environment um, I think that these days people are prioritizing quality of life and um, as they should. And it's it, as an employer, it's our job to create an atmosphere where they can have a good day at work and they can have a good life at home. And that is, you know, good pay, good work environment and growing skill sets. To me, those are important ways to attract people. Wonderful. Thank you for that answer. Uh, Srini, a couple of questions in the chat about some of the outcomes of the program. I know that Toyota has participated for a couple of years. Have uh, any of the interns been hired in at Toyota or have you seen a rise in applications? Could you talk a little bit about uh, any of the pipeline um, developments that you might have seen? Yeah, it's, it's honestly a really good question. So. I think the original intent of this high school internship is to promote interest in the jobs and then the job market. And of course, uh, in manufacturing and that objective has been achieved that the intent was not to directly hire uh, from that program, but though we encourage uh, students to do that. I don't think uh, uh, we have hired anybody through this internship program, hence, uh, we're working on some partnership with uh, Amelia on a true pipeline system. So hopefully uh, we'll make some good progress on it. Uh, to answer directly, no, we haven't hired anybody yet. I like that yet there, Srini. <laughs> well, um, I just wanna say thank you so much uh, to both of you for your wonderful participation in the panel. It was so informative and um, just your overall support of the program has been fantastic. So just like to say thank you very much. And I'm gonna turn it over to Olivia now to moderate our second panel.